anxious about cancer, everything else becomes anxious. The second that someone tells you that you might die, everything changes. Always in my life, I've been an anxious person. Naturally, when I was given that diagnosis, my anxiety shot up. I would just lay on the couch and go to work. I was extremely anxious that my, you know, my, my cancer is going to come back. Anytime they gave me good news, I would kind of ride on the high of my friends. Like I had no sense of relief of it, that things were going well, even though they were. I couldn't feel it inside. I used to drink quite a bit to get rid of the anxiety, but it was, it was only temporary. Anxiety about my, myself, my, my purpose, my body, my future, and it also led to a lot of depression. The more I drank, the more anxious I became that I'm not, I'm not healthy and I'm going to get my cancer back. I'm very attached to living. I like living. You know, I don't know about dying. Initially, it was absolutely terrifying. I was just terrified. I was floating on this immense, expansive, infinite sea of strength, of beauty. I saw my fear. You know, there was no difference between that infinite sea and me. All of my fear turned into anger. I will not be eaten alive by this fear. And once that happened, it was just gone. The fear was gone. I felt this, this connection with everything. I wish I could put it into words, but a, a sense of a connectedness that runs through all of us. It was so peaceful and so beautiful. I also felt a tremendous connection to everyone I've ever met and known in my life. It was such a, an epiphany for me. The cancer and the friends and the family and the past relationships and the present relationships, they're all together, you know, and they're all connected. I felt that I was bathed in love. I was feeling pure love. Just all-encompassing love. And I kept that feeling through the entire experience and the next day. And I still can experience this frequently. I felt this enormous rush of self-love. And I did not feel separate anymore. But I just had gratitude that, that I'm here. And it all... It... Gratitude. For being alive, no matter what happens. Now I know that, you know, what we call death, I just do not feel that it's at all an end. So I saw myself from a distance and I was lying down on a stretcher in front of a hospital. I came to an epiphany and I go, look, you know, why, you know, you don't let yourself be terrorized by other, you know, thoughts that are nonsense. So why let yourself be terrorized by this thought? That's when I saw some sort of black smoke come out of my body. You're done with this. You, you finished your treatment. You've gotten out of the hospital. Um, on your way out, you've also gotten rid of your anxiety. So now you're out. That's it. From now on, your life is great. The message coming to me is that you don't know how it's going to end. You don't know what your death is going to be. And that's just part of the deal of life. I remember asking if there would be a cure for cancer. And I was told it didn't matter. I was going to die anyway. It's just the nature of things. To feel separate and to feel alone is just a falsity. Because it's not how it is. And that's very comforting. And I've felt that way ever since. I find myself so much more connected to everyone and everything. What greater blessing is that? Especially for a person who held herself apart. I always felt like the kid who had their face pressed up against the window that wasn't invited to the party. Now I can look and I can take a measure of joy and say, wow, these people are really, 
enjoying themselves and I don't feel like I've missed out. And since the experience, I have enjoyed so much more of my life. Understanding that death will happen and, and being fully aware of its reality, which I think a lot of people aren't, it enables you to have a happier life, and that's an irony. People would just be so much happier if they would just admit that they were going to die. I finally came to realize that I have been a very dissatisfied person, just never satisfied with anything. And so if I found something I liked, then, well, there was always something not quite right with it, and I needed something else. This kind of made that go away. I really have what I need. A lot of people don't. Most people in the world probably don't have what they need. They don't even have the basics to survive. And, and I have everything I need. And I'm really happy about it. I was on uh, the treadmill the other day and this thought entered my mind, just came through my mind and it said, I want for nothing, nothing. That's how it's been. You know, my life is exactly the same as it was before. I had could give you the same list of complaints that I've had that I had before that, um, including getting that cancer diagnosis. You know, including everything that that I can think of that I don't like about my life, and yet it doesn't matter anymore. There wasn't a part of my life that it didn't make better. I have a greater awareness. I was able to let little things go much easier. A better capacity to listen. I could sleep without medication. To not feel compelled to talk out of neurosis. It reminded me who I am, but it also made me a better version of myself. Right now, it's not even that I'm not anxious about cancer. I'm just not anxious about dying. I, I'm fine with it. Somebody called me up today and they said, how are you? And I said, wonderful. And I am 65 years old and I have never, I just heard that coming out of my mouth. I have never said that. Never. I never felt that I really deserved to be alive. I never felt that I really belonged. I feel like that's gone. That, yeah, I do deserve to be alive as much as anyone else. I mean, I'm one of the luckiest unlucky people. You know, I, I was unlucky I got cancer, but I was lucky that I was chosen to be in this study. And it did change my life.